Good morning, class. We are finally on week six. I don't know if y'all can believe it, but I can't believe that we got here so quickly. Um, this is your last unit for the term. Um, week seven is mostly um, final paper and your any late work that you need to turn in. So this is the last week of any new readings or new assignments. So I hope you enjoy this PowerPoint. Um, Judaism is one of my favorite subjects to teach. So I'm really excited that we get to round out the term with this um, unit. So this week for your Prothor reading, um, he opens with a really, I think, apt quote. And he says, Judaism is to tell and retell a story and to wrestle with its key symbols, the character of God, the people of Israel, and the vexed relationship between the two. I would even add to that, that part of Jewish identity is really to think about chosenness, covenant, connection to the land, and response to catastrophe. And these are things that I've learned from professors and teachers along the way. But I think all of these things held in conjunction together are really important to the identity and the essence of Judaism and what it means to be a Jew. So the Judaism that we know today um, developed between the destruction of the first temple in 586 BE and the destruction of the second temple in 70 CE. And during this time, there were different, iter different iterations of Judaism. And the one that survived and the one that developed into the one that we have today really was founded between these two kind of pivotal moments in Judaism that really characterize moments of catastrophe and overcoming, right? So in many ways, Judaism cycles between moments of chaos and moments of calm. And you can kind of think of it in, in this way for these two periods of the catastrophe and the rebuilding of the temple, both literally the rebuilding and the metaphorical rebuilding of the community. Judaism itself has a really strong emphasis on storytelling and on law. So again, memory and law. These are two really important components for Judaism and how the religion operates, both in how it understands identity, how it understands covenant, and how it understands chosenness. So there are three main branches of Judaism or three main Jewish movements um, that we kind of recognize as, as the main ones. And those are reform, conservative, and orthodox. And the way that Prothero describes these um, are that reform focuses on ethics, orthodox focuses on law, and conservative focuses on tradition. However, despite these three, there are many other Jewish movements that exist in America and globally. So we have Hasidism, which is ultra-orthodox, Reconstructionist Judaism, Humanistic Judaism, which is actually non-theistic Judaism. So they do Judaism, they do good in the world, but without the presence of a God figure. So in many ways, they still observe ritual and tradition, just without a God figure. And then we have renewal Judaism, which is another form of Judaism. Um, so there's a ton of ways that people practice Judaism and the way that they see their Jewish identity interacting in their religious life. Judaism has many major holidays that are really integral to the community and the tradition. And many of these holidays really are built on storytelling, memory, law, response to catastrophe, and um, covenant and agreement with, with God. So many of the holidays that are celebrated in Judaism, as with other religions, are really built on narratives of storytelling and history and culture. So two of the minor holidays, which might actually come as a shock, are Hanukkah and Purim. So Hanukkah is actually one of the minor holidays in Judaism. It's not considered a high holy day um, like some of the other holidays. One of the reasons that Hanukkah got such a big push is because it falls around the same time as Christmas. And this was a way, especially for American Jews um, and capitalism and people who are selling and buying goods for the holiday season, this was a way that they could sort of integrate Jewish culture around the same time as um, Christmas and have them fall into a very similar holiday pattern as Christianity. The major holidays, which you might have heard of some of these, are Passover, um, Rosh Hashanah, which is um, the New Year, the Jewish New Year, and then Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. And in Judaism, there are days of fast and days of fasting, and so it is really important 
that especially when interacting with people who align themselves with Judaism or see themselves as Jewish people, that we are aware and cognizant of holidays which may include fasting. It's really important that we know when someone is or is not fasting because it will affect um, perhaps how they're operating in the world that day and it will allow us to give them particular space to celebrate and um, or venerate that particular day. Um, one of the other days that's really important to Judaism is the Sabbath and um, this is from Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. And this is where some branches of Judaism, they are prohibited from 39 specific creative works. So, I'm, so you may have heard that on the Sabbath, people cannot work, right? So it's actually a creative act. So this includes things pushing, pulling, turning, ripping. And this is a really special time where families come together and they enjoy a specific meal that has specific rituals and elements and material objects that really round out the whole of that day. So your reading this week is from a book entitled Jewish Art, A Modern Art History, and the authors of this book are Samantha Baskin and Larry Silver. And we're just reading a few of the introductory pages, mostly to get you situated about why we are doing this reading and why this week's focus is on Jewish art. Um, Samantha Baskin is an art historian who foc focuses on Jewish art, and she's written a really um, large canon of books that are really important to how we think about and understand art produced by Jews or how we even think about what it means to be a Jewish person producing art. So the thesis of this book is that the book asserts that investigating Jewish art can help to establish elements of artistic identity within the larger analysis of artistic production. We, the authors, hope instead to consider a neglected, often rejected element of individual formation in considering the variety of definitions by artists, both for themselves and for their works during the past two centuries. So part of what this means is that this book is really an investigative journey to ask questions about what is Jewish art and why would it matter when studying painting and sculpture in the modern era? Another question that's important is what is the Jewish experience? And does Jewishness make something more Jewish? What elements of art create it create a Jewish piece of art? Is it the, the artist Jewishness? Is it the symbols in the piece? These are all things that the authors investigate in this book. And again, you guys are just reading the introduction, a really small section. 
So as this book will show, Jewish art is far from monolithic in style, form, and subject because of the remarkably multifarious Jewish experience across both geographies and time. And so what the authors are saying is that, as we've seen with other religious traditions, not only is the religious tradition itself non-monolithic, meaning there are different branches, there's different ways to practice, there's different ways to operate in the world within a specific religion, but the art itself is also not one type of art. There's different ways that it's styled, the form, the subject matter, whether it's a sculpture or a painting, whether it's contemporary or not, um, whether it's an interactive piece or a non-interactive piece. These are all things that affect the way that we think about one, art, and two, Jewish art, caveated with Jewish experience that is is um, different across the world and across different time periods. So some Jewish art, as the authors suggest, is defined by the artist, the content, the context, or the symbols from the tradition. And both Baskin and Silver say that actually in some cases, the piece that's defined by the artist is actually the artist's rejection of their Jewishness, which in some ways makes that piece or pieces Jewish in a way by maybe what they include or what they don't include. More recently, Jewish art has been excluded from the canon of modern art, and that's part of this investigative journey is is what can Jewish art offer to the modern art canon, and why is it important that we study it and we consider it to be part of this larger category of produced pieces? Um, and one small thing to add is that Jewish art cannot be studied like Christian art or likened to it. Jewish art is really different because of the way that Judaism and um, Jewishness allows art and allows um, images and so we don't want to compare or liken it to how we might study Christian art. These are going to be really different ways of doing art. Um, for instance, Christian art typically does have perhaps Jesus or the Virgin Mary or different um, people in the Bible. It's not as common in Jewish art. They don't have images which showcase a god or god figure. Um, and so we don't want to get into a habit of comparing these two things. So your Instagram prompt this week is to think about what is Jewish art or what constitutes Jewish art. So you will be tasked with finding contemporary Jewish art or modern Jewish art. You'll be using and searching through the database um, Center for Jewish Art using their modern Jewish art section. And the website's a little slow. Um, they are doing some construction, so just be patient with it. Um, Make sure that you give yourself ample time to look through the pieces on the website um, before you need to turn in your post. So as we read in Baskin and Silver's introduction, understanding what Jewish art is, is difficult. Is it someone's heritage, current religious affiliation, their familial lineage? All of these things can and do play a part in how scholars of Jewish art understand what this means. So once you look through the database, this is what your assignment is. So search through the Modern Jewish Art Database on the Center for Jewish Art website, and the next slide will show you what that looks like. Find an image or an object that you think is interesting, intriguing, or exciting. And there's hundreds of pages. Don't just pick the first couple. I know what they look like. Um, pick a random page and look through it. Answer the following questions about the object or image, and this will require a little bit of extra research. So again, make sure that you give yourself ample time to work through this. So is the artist of the piece Jewish? Try your best to find this information. And it may be that you don't know or you can't find it, and that's fine. It's 
important and interesting to know if the artist of that piece makes their Jewish identity or their not Jewish identity um, known on the internet. Does the content of this piece make it Jewish or does the G artist's Jewishness make it Jewish? So think really carefully about this question. Baskin and Silver will be able to help you. I want you to reflect and come to your own conclusions, but make sure that you use the resources in your reading. As always, your Instagram prompt should have at least one citation from your reading. And because this week I'm asking you to go do a little bit of extra research, it should also include a citation direct or indirect from the website where you found information about the artist themselves. Once you follow the link to the Center for Jewish Art, the image on the left side is going to be what you see. I've put a circle around the modern Jewish art category and you'll click that square and then the image on the left is the first page of the database that we're looking for. So again, there's tons of pages, there's tons of images. Um, I obviously know what the first nine images are, maybe pick something different, um, and filter the images differently or as you see fit. Um, I think right now they are filtered by artist last name, so you can filter by date, you can filter by location, um, find something that's interesting, find something that speaks to you, um, and make sure that you do a good job of thinking critically about it um, in your assignment. Here is an example Instagram post um, from Fall 1. The student wrote, Some Jewish art is defined by distinctive subjects and symbols from the tradition, which have been incorporated into art by artists of Jewish descent. Although I could find no evidence of Podwal being from Jewish descent, he enjoys strong aspects of the Jewish culture. I think this piece represents an important part of Jewish practice, as it is a synagogue which is a place of worship for the Jewish community. The image depicts a little town called a shuttle and features a talit, a small Jewish prayer scarf draped over the synagogue. I think the content of the piece makes it Jewish. The shuttle and synagogue are a representation of Jewish culture and practice. Anyone can paint what fascinates them, as Podwell did in his artwork. Your discussion board prompt this week is a little more open-ended than in previous weeks. So this whole term, we've been thinking a lot about identity, materiality, and insider perspectives on religion. So in the Buddhism chapter, we worked with the Oriental monk figure and how that particular figure interacts with insiders and outsiders of the tradition. Um, as with Islam, we saw that the way women wear headscarves or hijabs um, affects or doesn't affect the way that people perceive them and that that does go into the consideration of the scarves that they wear. Again, insider and outsider perspectives on religion. So this discussion board is more open-ended than normal, but I want to give you space to reflect. So use these questions as a place to start, but don't feel like you are tied into answering them. So using your readings from this week, Prothro and Silver and Baskin, what have you learned about Judaism that you didn't already know? What does it mean to be Jewish? And I don't expect you to be able to answer that question in the course of a discussion board post, but I want you to think about it. What does Jewishness mean? You obviously heard earlier in this um, lecture that there are branches of Judaism, there is a branch of Judaism that is non-theistic, meaning that they don't believe in a God figure or they don't need God necessarily to do good things in the world and to be Jewish. So what does it mean to have a religious identity? According to Prothro, what has Judaism given to others? There's a number of things that he said Judaism has given to the world, to American culture, to culture at large. How did Judaism become Judaism? How did it become the Judaism that we know today? How many different branches of Judaism are there? Prother talks about this in his book in a number of different places. And finally, what objects are important in Jewish holiday rituals? 
And I think this question will be particularly fun um, depending on the image that you pick for your Instagram post. I do expect citations from your readings and I do expect one to two full detailed paragraphs. This is your last post. Make sure that it counts and make it really good. I've included an example in the next slide of what I expect and what my expectation is for this post. I'm giving you a lot of room to think and a lot of freedom to explore what fascinates you. So I expect really good work with direct or indirect citations from either or both of your readings.